yeah, thanks for taking some time out of your Sunday to to chat music and music PR. Um, I'm really, I'm stoked to do this, but I, it sucks that we can't be together in, in person to do it. Um, when Billy, you know, started talking to me about potentially doing this, so I'm like, wait, I get to come back to Canberra? <laughs> yes, please. And then COVID had other plans. So regardless, I'm so happy to see so many little little boxes uh, tuning in today. Um, I guess just to begin with, uh, I, I guess it's probably easier just to give a bit of an overview of, I guess, what I do and, and, and my intersection with music PR. Um, I'm based in Melbourne, but I was born and bred in Adelaide. So I guess my music career started writing for different artists and reviewing shows. Um, so for the last 10 or so years, I've been working as a music journalist, but for the last maybe five, I've been in music PR, which has been a super interesting experience because oftentimes there's like a weird, not necessarily like a, like a clash between music media and PR and publicists in terms of like people's reputations or whatever, but uh, they're two very different um, kettles of fish when it comes to, you know, jobs in the music industry. So it's been, um, it's been a great learning experience. And as I was saying to Billy and Daniel earlier on, like what ties them both together for me is the fact that I get to work with a lot of musicians from the ground up. Um, I get to I get to help further tell musicians stories in different ways and get music out there to more people and help them sort of elevate themselves, whether it's getting on radio for the first time or, you know, continuing to, to get them more exposure in an online and editorial space, particularly in Australia where it's, you know, I would say the media landscape has changed so much even over the last 10 years since I've been doing it. So that's that's kind of what is what's been the, the big draw card for me. Um, in terms of Beehive PR, we've been I think we've been running for about maybe six or seven years now. Um, it started as kind of the brainchild um, of a wonderful publicist, our boss, Sammy, who's been based in Sydney. She came from like a festival touring background um, and decided to go out on her own and, and just start up this company to, to again, help champion musicians and, and really work in that in grassroots way of, of um, getting new music out there. So she's been at the head of it all since then. When I came on board, we were based in Melbourne. And then this year, we've been lucky enough to expand even further and have uh, staff members in Canberra and also in Brisbane too. So you may see us about a little bit more um, representing artists from all over the country and from all different backgrounds too. So our team comes from a variety of different backgrounds, musically and uh, professionally, but we're all driven by that same passion and drive that I was talking about before. You know, we want to elevate our clients' presence um, and champion this real sense of individualism at the end of the day. So if, you know, we look at our roster, we can just see how diverse all of our tastes have been over, over the last couple of years. Like we've been able to represent bands like psychedelic porn crumpets to the bands, um, Johnny Hunter and Eliza and the Delusionals. Internationally, we've been able to represent campaigns for artists like Manchester Orchestra, uh, Duran Duran, Metronomy, Trippy Red, um, Django Django, and a whole bunch of others. Oh, that's over the last couple of years. So we've really started to see an expansion of what we can do in the in, in terms of getting international artists back into the Australian scope. Um, and that's been largely off the back of, I feel like connecting passionate people with passionate musicians. I feel like that's what it is at the end of the day, ultimately. Um, as we mentioned before, if you do have any questions as we go along, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, I'll be keeping an eye out and I guess Billy will be keeping an eye out as well. So if, if any point you wanna 
offer up some questions or feedback or if you just wanted to you know get involved I really want to make sure that we've got this as like a conversation as opposed to me just giving you guys a lecture because <laughs> I've done way too many of those over the last year so I really want people to, <laughs> to feel as involved as possible um so I guess to begin with I thought it'd be easy to break down like what exactly you'd be getting if you're engaging with a PR campaign um uh, some of the big questions we get or I get frequently is musicians coming to me being like you know so, so I've got this music that I want to get out there you know I've I've been working so hard on getting this release together I want to get my song on the radio I want to get blogs to write about me but I just don't I don't even know where to start um and to them I generally say okay well that's fine Please don't feel like that you're any less of a person for not knowing because it is, it can be really overwhelming, you know, but the way that we tend to roll out our campaigns is that we offer up a variety of options for you. So in terms of a digital media landscape, we like to break them down into tiers that makes it less overwhelming and we can see like where you might be best fit. You got your top tier outlets, like your music feeds, your scenesters your rolling stones your tone devs then on the other side of the spectrum you've got like your really big indie taste maker outlets like your happy magazines your purple sneakers your au reviews um those sorts of outlets that might not necessarily be of the same i guess public renown as say a rolling stone but those are the sorts of publications that once you get in with them and they start getting behind you, you will have their support for the entire way through. And I think it's really important for artists to realise, and not just to realise, but to know that when you've got those um, indie publications behind you, they can be integral in keeping your profile lit. They can be integral in keeping like the momentum turning even when you're off release. And as publicists, that's kind of part of our job is to make sure that each of these editors, even in terms of community radio, all of those broadcasters know who you are. We can keep the conversation going around you and your release. So by the time you come back and be like, okay, we did this, I released this single with you guys in February. I'm now releasing an EP in June. We can tell who's covered you guys of that last campaign so we can circle back on them and be like yo we've got this artist who's come back around and they'll be like oh, okay cool I'm just going to go look up what I've done on them in the past mm. great let's set up more press for them so it's it's kind of like in those initial stages it's all about us working with you figuring out the sort of artist you are and the sort of messaging you want to get out there and then identifying where we can best see your story being well fitted that's also on radio that's on as well as it can be with editorial um let me try and get some kind of techie i'm going to try and share my screen so just bear with me one second no worries yeah if you do have any questions for source please pop them in the chat um we do have a couple coming through privately thank you for those people sending those mm -hmm. through uh, some of these I might leave just to the end. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Just so that we can kind of do it. Like, we can just be lightning fast with it, you know? <laughs> Easy. Okay, so can everybody see this? Uh, yes. Yeah? Okay, cool. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay, cool. This never normally works for me, so <laughs> this is a moment. Um. So this is essentially a rundown of what we send our potential clients. And I feel like this is the best way I can run you guys through what a campaign with us would look like. Each publicity agency will have a different way of doing things, but they all kind of follow the same guidelines. Um, as I said before, you know, each of our campaigns will be constructed or it's that is most relevant to you whether or not you're releasing an album, whether or not you're releasing your first single ever, um, we can work with you on, on getting a campaign together that is going to benefit you the most. I, you know, I, we never want to make artists feel like, you know, you're throwing all of this money out into the ether 
and you're getting nothing for it. So, uh, you know, I never want people to feel like they should be afraid of asking us, you know, we're, we're doing something a little bit different. How can we, you know, how can we work with you on this one? So as you can see, our campaigns extend to include single EP and album releases. We also work various tours when they can be happening again. Uh, we also have been branching into the festival awards and event space too. Okay, so here's like an example campaign timeline. So generally most uh, agencies will do a month to month model. This makes sure that we can um, really capitalize on a release window for you and make sure that, you know, once a single comes out, we're just pounding the pavement, we're pitching, we're following up, we're landing interviews, we're doing all of this stuff in the in, in this four week time frame where A, the music is gonna be um, at the forefront of everyone's minds and we can just really be smashing those content pieces and targets out for you. So week one, um, whoever the lead publicist on your campaign is, they'll be generating the press releases, they'll be talking with you uh, directly about the, the, con the, sorry, the campaign aims that I mentioned before, what's gonna work best for you, and also what, we're, what we would require from you as an artist as the next you know, few weeks of the campaign goes on. Weeks two and three, generally moving into release, into release time, this is when we'll be seeing premieres hitting. If you've booked it for an, for an online campaign, you'll see a single or a video premiere going live with different outlets. Potentially, if you've booked us for radio, we'll be seeing those initial radio first spins coming through. Um, at this point, you know, we'll also be scheduling our social strategies, which I'll go into a bit more later. But th that two, week two and three period is generally where the bulk of our work comes in. So we're connecting with our national network of journalists, radio podcasters, programmers, um, contacts at Spotify, Apple, all the DSPs, pitching and following up on, um, um, on music engagement, content placement, that sort of thing as well. And at that point, we'll also be Obviously, continuing to converse with you at that point, you know, we'd be getting you to do interviews, we're getting you on podcasts, you know, whatever those content aims are, that's the bulk period of time where you'd be really, we'd be working you guys to the bone, let's just say. <laughs> um, and then we, the final week of the campaign is just generally for, you know. To a live event about PR. What was that, sorry? <laughs> I think you can continue. It's okay. Look, oh, I think we have unmuted. It's all good. All good. Um, and yeah, that fourth week is generally about compiling and preparing all of our reports, um, at which point you'll be sent like a comprehensive rundown of all the content we've landed, um, all the radio play that you've received, and also the feedback from, you know, if from Triple J, from Rage, from all of those... Um, you know, major editorial and radio contacts that we've been in touch with. Because I think that's another thing that, you know, has always been such a gripe within Australian media as well. It's like you can release all of this music, but oftentimes there's no feedback. You know, you can be pitching to Triple J, you can be pitching to Triple J on Earth and you'll get nothing back. And even a lot of time that's that's something that publicists go through as well. It's like it can be the bane of my existence sometimes just like, harassing and like ambushing um the heads of different stations but it's it's kind of just the climate we're in right now so it's you know it can be frustrating but please never feel like a it's something that you're doing wrong if you're not hearing back from anybody um or that people aren't listening because that's it's definitely not the case it's just you know we're living in a oh sorry we're operating within a a very small industry compared to other markets and as it just, it just gets keeps on being even more competitive as we go. So now in terms of the different sorts of campaigns we have, we've like we've split it up into uh, different tailored options. Mm. So we've got your full campaigns which would cover 
print, uh, servicing to radio, servicing to print and online. If you've got music videos, then we take it to your Rage, your MTVs, all the video channels. That also can include playlisting as well. Um, a lot of times, you're, whoever you're distributing your music to, through will have the opportunity to do DSPs pitching. So that's Spotify, Apple, um, Amazon Music, all of those sorts of things. But you can also opt for us to do that as part of your full campaign as well. If that's a bit too much or you, if you feel like that's not really, you know, what you're looking for for your release, that's fine. We can split that into a half campaign so we can focus on really consolidating your release and your presence in either the radio world or in the print and online world. So I often like to, when I'm working with artists, being like, okay, let's have a look at what your presence is at the moment. Maybe you're a new artist and you're just like, this is my first release. I'm not really sure where to go. I would often say, let's book you in for a half campaign with print and online. Because as much as radio play is great in the early stages, I find you'll have a better success rate booking something in for editorial. That way you're getting those early interviews in, you're getting those early content placements in, your, you know, your best new music of the week features. That way, when we can take it to radio, we've got all of this content already published to then take it to broadcasters, as opposed to taking a song from an artist who they've never heard before with, you know, there's, there's no sort of digital footprint behind you. So that's what I always say. I find like people generally have a better success rate that way. But then also on the other side of things, it could be a, a thing of, you know, hey, so, you know, where it's been a couple of years since we've come back with new music. We kind of want to see where this single is going to sit because we had quite good success with Triple J or with Community Radio a couple of years ago. We want to see what the vibe is. Can we book in a half campaign for radio? Just to see how it's going to fly. That way I can, you know, then I'll spend four weeks taking it to Richard Kingsville, taking it to Nick Finlay, getting all of that feedback, but also building up that um, groundswell momentum for you and your music on the community radio side of things as well. So then you can like identify what territories the song's been hitting in. If you are going on tour, we could be like, oh, so it's like, you know, we've got a, a four run tour going through Canberra, Melbourne, Sydney, and Adelaide. And then I can look at where the, the biggest targets have been here. Be like, okay, well, Adelaide Radio has really loved it. Let's get you in studio while you're there. FBI has really gone behind it. I'm going to try for rotation there. And when you're in Sydney, let's hook you up for like an in-studio performance or an interview. So it's all of this stuff, it, it really does bleed together. But when you've got the option to go one way or the other, I feel like we can you can really finesse uh finesse your approach when it comes to you know exposure and getting your music actually uh out there in a way where it's going to stick as opposed to being like hey we've released this single that we've been working on for like the last three months it's going to have hype behind it for a week and then and then nothing so like these campaigns are, are set in place to make sure that we can um make it a sustainable release and, and kind of ensure longevity for you guys at the same time. Now, if you're in a position where, you know, budget may be an issue, which again is totally fair, especially over the last couple of years, and you're like, you know what, we might, you know, we can't really justify taking out a full campaign right now. Um, we really want, just want to focus on, on building ourselves up or we, we're not really sure what direction to go in. That's fine too, because there are other ways to work around that. Um, in the last, I'd say in the last year, we've been working with um, one of our new team members, Liz, who's an incredible uh, digital marketing and social media strategist. Uh, she's come on board to work specifically on these sorts of bespoke campaigns with artists. So this means that she'd be working with you and this is what this screen 
really pertains to. There's a, a number of digital marketing campaigns we offer where she'll be working with you and teaching you how to elevate your social media presence, how to make sure that your branding is on point, how to make sure that even if you have a smaller budget for advertising and social strategy, you can be capitalizing on that budget to make sure that by the time you are at that point where you're just like, okay, we really want to make you go at it with this EP campaign. We want to make sure that, you know, we're getting it in front of all the right people. You've got the social presence there and the digital footprint there already. That's kind of done that early footwork for you. Because we've been finding in, in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of clients who have been like, you know what, we're really happy with what you guys have done. We're so stoked. Um, on how this campaign's run, but we don't know how to, to keep that momentum going once we're out of campaign. How can we, you know, what are some tools that we can use ourselves to, to sort of keep that momentum going? So we have these campaigns in place um, to, to sort of give you guys those tools to, to, to kind of go forward and, you know, and to make it work yourself as okay. well. Had a couple of questions come through, and I think this might be a yeah, good time yeah. to ask them. I suppose. Totally. Um, this one is from Natalie. Thanks, Natalie. Natalie asks great questions in these. Um, could love you, a great question. Love a great <laughs> question. And you, you kind of started explaining that a little bit um, mm -hmm. just in the last few sentences that you said. <laughs> but um, could you explain a little bit about what a digital health check, I guess, yeah. is and what, like, how that uh, plays into, I guess, your overarching picture as an artist? Totally. So essentially what we mean by a digital health check is Liz will break down um, basically how healthy your branding and social presence is from the, you know, the time that you, you'd start the campaign through to the end of the campaign. Um, she'll be doing these health checks to see, okay, well, we've seen X percentage of natural growth as a result of um these targeted not targeted ads because that's that's not really the right terminology but um the use of like targeted content placement whether it's like um you know you could do a facebook live video which takes you like takes your fans like behind the scenes in the studio or you're sharing like a post that shows behind the scenes footage or you know like a tour diary or something like that so uh, implementing different bits and pieces that will draw native content and engagement back to your social pages and start to generate traffic that way. So a digital health check is essentially like a check-in to see just how much that's growing or, you know, maybe, you know, you road test an Instagram post that might not necessarily get the engagement that you thought it would get. So you could, like Liz will be able to, have a look at those algorithms and those percentages and be like, okay, look, that one didn't work as well, but hey, this IG live that you did two weeks ago, that was popping. So yeah. how can we utilize that to, to sort of boost it out? True. Okay. That's good advice. Um, keep an eye on your, on your digital health, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one is from Brian. He mm -hmm. asks, about um he asked about the finances of things like this as well um is there like for for pr services what should you really be expecting to pay as an artist depending on obviously it depends on the project yeah in terms the of i guess the percentage of your income as an artist might be a better way to ask that question sure i mean this is this is a really interesting one because every agency will offer different prices for different things and um, again, it's w one thing we do at Beehive is that we we try and you know we're we're not an agency that's you know going to charge the absolute world <laughs> for a four week camp because there are like to keep it keep it a hundred one hundred percent like there are there are agencies who have been out there who can target young artists who may you know if, if the people in these bands might be working nine to fives so they mm. do have the ability to have that budget there so they'll charge them through the teeth for them 
for services that other agencies will be re quite reasonable for. So that's one thing I'm always straight up about telling people is like, even if you look at the sort of deck that we would offer and you're like, maybe that's a bit expensive, that's totally fine. I always encourage people to do your research. There's no harm in hitting up a few different people and being like, what can you offer us? And then that's up to you to make your call. You know what I mean? Um, I mm. think for a full campaign, you shouldn't be paying any more than say between two to three grand for like a month to month. For, for any sort of release, for, for any release period, because, you know, you've got to think about where you are at the state of your career, whether or not you've got management you're sending to pay, whether or not you're with a label, you know, you, there, there's all these different factors. Not everyone's going to be on the same journey or the same path at that point. So if you feel like something isn't realistic, bring that up in meetings. You know, I, that, that's one thing I would always say. But I'd say, yeah, no more than two to three at any one go. I feel like that's reasonable. But again, it's, it's, it's all per release. It's all per what you want to do. If you want to extend your campaigns, like we've been working with some artists who, you know, will, will be brought on for album campaigns as part of like a, like a year-long sort of strategy so we'll still be operating by this month to month model but it's like um almost like you're being contracted for the whole year like we've started out with some artists like I think even with the porn crumpets that's how it sort of started out so we'd be booked for one release knowing that there'd be like two albums by the end of the year because that <laughs> band works like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard they're like 50 albums in by now so <laughs> Yeah, there are plenty, like so many options on offer. Um, if it's something that you are actually interested in, um, Billy can give you our email address after this and we can kind of go into that a bit more in depth um, to, to work things out for you. But yeah, I'd say anywhere between two and three is so reasonable. Yeah, perfect. That's all yeah. the questions for now. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let me just get my other sheet back uh, I guess we kind of covered a lot of that stuff that I was going to talk about <laughs> sorry no wow. no no you're fine you're so fine um uh, digital bars and marketing campaigns okay so I think I've, I've spoken a bit about it before um but I feel like it's always good to reiterate just with some of the the, the clients that we've worked with specifically um I think there's like the concept of publicity or artist PR is almost, it's like one of, it can be one of those jobs in the music industry where like people know it exists, but a lot of time, unless you're working with a publicist directly, you're kind of like, why do I need that? Like I've got, I've built up my local fan base really well on my own. Um, I know, I know my local community. Like why, you know, why should I pay for someone to service outside of that? And that's completely fine too. Um, it can also be a little disheartening, say when, you know, you're doing it on your own and you're putting so much effort and time and your own money into making this music and it can only go a certain, a certain length or a certain distance because you are doing it on your own. So I completely get that as well. And that's sort of where, we come in like I like to think of uh, mm -hmm. artist PR as helping get over that little hurdle and just helping sort of crack it open getting your music out to a broader audience um you know it, again just to use the porn crumpets as an example because I've been like deep in prep for them <laughs> over the last like, couple of weeks um you know Sammy's been integral in the growth of that band as part of that management team um, for probably since the beginning of, of Beehive, you know, and we, we look at what they've been able to do now, you know, they've, they've yeah, they've had the feature album, they've had like a version that Aria nominated now for this album that the, the last record they released and it's still continuing to grow for them, but that took a lot of time. So it's like, 
not everyone is going to have that like overnight success or that seemingly overnight success. Like not everyone's going to be the Kid Leroy. Not everyone's going to be your Morgan Evans. You know what I mean? Like it oftentimes it takes a lot of time. Um, but what, you know, what we've learned and what we like to tell our artists is like, it's crucial to know and to under understand that developing your brand and profile as an artist in Australia is all about knowing your intent behind your music, knowing exactly what you want to do with it, where you want to go with it, and having that, I guess, that intent and that passion for staying true to that message and that identity the whole way through. Because as your publicist, that's what we're there to help you do. We're there to just help bolster that sonic identity, to bolster that creative identity and to make sure everybody else out there knows that too. So, you know, if that means that, you know, we work with you on your debut release and you're releasing you trap music and then by the end of the year, you're like going to like soulful R&B and you want to rebrand everything, that's great. That's why we're here to help you with that. But as long as, you know, you're remaining completely true to it and you want to write 110%, you're going to be successful. You, you'll be successful in that. We're just there to, to sort of help flesh it out, to put like a little sauce on your press releases <laughs> and, and to be your champions out there in the field, I feel. So that's, that's one of the big things I really wanted to make sure that you guys know. It's like there, there are so many tiers of tiers of the music industry and so many kind of I hate to say it but there's so many darker pockets of this industry that I feel really lets independent artists down a lot I've been working in those positions as you know working around those sorts of positions as well and now that I'm in a position as a publicist to to really try and help change those dynamics from the inside um that's kind of what keeps me in it and working with with so many fabulous artists and 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 musicians and and helping them get like a more realistic view of the industry but also a more realistic view of you know mm. just how receptive radio program is how receptive journalists and independent media are for new music right now it's like there's never been a more important time to be to be releasing your art and to be getting it out there I feel so if, you know if you're having that creative itch right now just follow it just follow it Good advice. trust me it'll be great <laughs> it'll be great um, um but got, yeah I've got a couple more questions coming through for you if that's okay uh -huh. um what uh what are some of the things that an artist should do before they approach a PR agency um is there anything that you think artists can do by themselves before I guess you kind of touched on this a little bit already anyway, but what would you say is the thing that most um, artists don't do before they reach out to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think sometimes, you know, we'll get artists who will come to us, say like three weeks out from the release of a single, hmm. being <laughs> like, we've got this song, it's dropping in like a fortnight. Can we book you in? And we're just like, okay, bro, we need like, we need a way more notice than that. <laughs> um, that's probably one of the big things is, is that we've, you've really got to plan it um, because, you know, we're, we're happy to work with you, of course, but we need adequate time to be able to set up a, a release strategy that's going to benefit you at the end of the day. So timing is one thing. If you know that engaging with a PR agency is something you want to do for your release, start that process a good couple of months before you even get to release date. So you know where your budgets are, you know how your, you know, how your actual music rollout's going along. So, you know, if we're looking at just for example, I had an artist come to me last month being like, hey, we've just received grant funding um, to actually take on music PR um, we're looking to release our next single late November what would a campaign look like for you so mm -hmm. I was just like okay cool you engage with me in September I can then look at my calendar be like all right I can fit you in in this block but that then means okay I'm going to need all of the I'm going to need the the mastered material I'm going to need your press shots I'm going to need all the assets required 
X amount of time in advance. So probably the big thing there is timing. Mm. If you're getting in touch with us, be aware that once we lock in, then it's like, it, you know, it has to be on. So you've, like I said, you've got to have all your music together. If, you, if you've made a video, we'd require like a draft cut of it if not the final thing early. So we can be pitching that to Rage, we can be pitching that to MTV, pitching it to an outlet for a premiere. Um, press shots are important, obviously. If you're planning on executing new shoots, try and have that done in, as early and as in advance as possible. Um, mm. Okay. I think those are probably the big um, things. Just make sure you, you come with as much prepared as you can because once we're in campaign, it's like we should be looking at just starting to land as much advanced content as possible. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a good response. Timing, it sounds like, is really everything. Because <laughs> then it's like, you know, you, you don't want to be caught out having to scramble. You know what I mean? And, like, sometimes some things are unavoidable. Like, you know, you might something might happen and you're like, I've got to go back to the studio and, you know, just fix a little thing. So I've got to remaster it and, you know, deliver it later on. It's like, okay, that's fine. But once we have those release dates locked in and those premiere dates locked in, those are sort of like fixed points in time and they can't be moved around. So you, you just don't want to get stuck with no time on your hands to fix anything if you need to. Okay, I've got, I'll try and race through it. These questions are coming in thick and fast, so I'll try and get to as many as I can. <laughs> so, um, how do you know, this is another, another question for you, so, but as an artist, how do you know, I guess, when you're ready for something like a PR agent to come in and mm. help you with those things? What are kind of some of those warning signs? I mean, that, would that when you know that you're ready for it? Yeah. Um, well, it depends. I mean, it's, it, again, it, everyone's going to be different. Like, mm. you could... You could have been releasing independently for ages and you're like, you know what, it, it's done well. Like, I'm not saying the only way you're going to get on Triple J is if you have a PR agent, because that's not true. Like, I've known a lot of different artists who've gone ages without having publicists and they've been able to just catch the ear of people at the right time and, you know, they've been able to spark up their relationships that way or, you know, their managers have had an in with different places and that's how they've been managed to pop off. So... Never want to say, you know, without us, you, you won't get anywhere without us. That's, just, <laughs> that's not true. But, you know, sometimes artists will be like, you know, we just don't want to focus on doing that legwork. We, yeah. We've done it for so long. We, you know, we want to concentrate on getting our live show together. We've got a national tour that we've got sorted and we can't, we can't focus on PR or we just don't want to. Yeah. So can we just pay you to do it? Please. Like sometimes yeah. that'll be the that that'll be the moment. Other times it'll be like, you know, you might be an artist who is debuting a new project, so you kind of already know how the role how these sorts of rollouts go. But you're like, oh, I don't know how to reintroduce myself um, outside of my local community. I'm not really sure what you know, yeah, where to take it and where to service it. Maybe maybe a publicist can help me with that. Again, like I was saying, cover those introductory, that introductory sort of territory. True. I think those are the, those are probably the two most common ones we get met with. It's just like, A, they, they don't want to do it themselves because they've already been grafting for years. <laughs> um, or they're just like, we've been, we've just been focused for so long on working on this music that, that's what we want to focus on and we just want somebody else to to mm. sort of just take the pressure off which is which is more than fair too true mm. all righty we'll, we'll keep going we'll keep tearing through these um <laughs> this question is from ali thanks ali he asks um i'd be interested to know if those things that an artist with a good quality product but maybe not a big following hasn't really gigged their project isn't live hasn't had much traction online um, whether they're a candidate or is it quite difficult if there isn't really much of a following when you begin the campaign? Not at all. Um, some of some of my favourite campaigns have been with with artists who I've had to work with from the beginning in, in really building up from the ground up. Um, and I, I've said this, like, when I used to run a publication as well, you know, 
it, it's all it's all about the music at the end of the day. If they're good people, like if I like the sound of the music, sure I'm gonna work with you. Like it's like that's what it should be about for all of us, you know. That's what we connect on. Um, and sometimes that's that's all those musicians need is just that extra bit of help to 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 kind of get that that foot up. So if the music's good, then if the music's good and we can fit you into the calendar, then fuck yeah. Like it's mm. it's it's never <laughs> gonna be a thing for us about like, oh, you know, you've got two reviews on Triple J on Earth, so we're not gonna do anything with you because you've got <laughs> on the five hundred point like, nah. Nah, man. Like, if the music's going to hit different, it's always going to hit different. So, I would never be deterred by by that because we've all got to start somewhere. Um, and I feel like now is possibly even a better time because everyone's just online all the time. So there's so many ways to get to get connected with people. <laughs> and then um, we've got another question. Just pivoting, I guess, like slightly away from beehives. Like mm. anime, because they are amazing. But if you're if you are an emerging artist and you are just trying to make a start, what do you think are some of the best things that you can do right from the get go um, to kind of position you well for maybe a PR campaign with a third party agency down the line? Or what are some of the things that you think you see emerging artists do that are like really nice and exciting um, that mm. make you work a bit more? Um, I think. It, it, again just <laughs> no no it, no it's not it's 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 more like so so again for, for myself personally this is probably go, going to go right against everything I've just <laughs> said in like the last 45 minutes but if I wasn't working so much in this digital space you would not see me online at all. And I feel like that's because I work in it so much. Like I, you know, just the idea of having like 50 different social media accounts kind of freaks me out, but I get the point of them in terms of setting yourself up as an artist and getting your branding on point. Um, I feel like that's probably one of the best things you can do for yourself. Um, and even if you're like me and it kind of freaks you out a little bit, there are so many different videos out there and, and um, tools that you can access just to figure out the basics of of launching your brand and 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 getting yourself set up that way whether or not it's being like okay I'm really shit on Facebook but Instagram's where everyone seems to be following me cool focus your um, all of your content and your artist branding on Instagram mm. you know roll out different ad spends on Instagram vice versa if Facebook's your thing if you find that um for local shows people are engaging more with your Facebook and you know getting tickets through there and stuff like that use that as your main lane to to sort of build and curry that that native sort of fan engagement there because it's like that's where people are going to be coming to you for and that's how you're going to get your your face and your name out there so down the line when you feel like you want to work with a third party you can be like okay well I've already sort of laid the foundation myself um and I've got that on lock now when it comes to you know servicing things on your own um I know that can be really scary as well but mm -hmm. that's also <clears throat> relatively easy to circumnavigate again there are different tools out there that if, if Billy's happy to again like distribute my email if you want to know more like I can hook you up with like different sites that will show you templates of pitching music to 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 sorry to publications for coverage um the best way to get in touch with uh radio broadcasters how to best submit your music for MTV coverage if you've got a video like just little tips and tricks that are out there online uh, that you can just school yourself up on and, and just finesse as much as as much as you can to, to make sure that when those people are hearing from you, um, they know that they're talking to a real person as opposed to someone who might be like CCing 50 different radio, radio presenters <laughs> on the same email and being like, play my music, you know, that they're going to be more responsive. And they're like, hey, you know, you've been playing XYZ artists who I really like maybe you will like my music too because it's in that sort of vein you know what I mean mm. so little tips and tricks but yeah I mean I'm, I'm happy to hook you guys up where I can if you'd like that 
I will. Um, I'm going to pop your email address in the uh, in the chat now. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, um, a great live show. Get your live show on point. Get people out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I should have mentioned that before, but I've been living in Victoria for the last two years, so I don't even know what a live show is anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cut True. your teeth. Cut your teeth out there. <laughs> I might do um, one or two more questions and sure. then yeah if anyone does want to chirp up and ask a question in person then please go right ahead don't let me stop you um, but between now and then I'll keep diving into this list mm -hmm. um, other than this one's from Hayden by the way thanks Hayden um, other than time and effort that goes into doing PR yourself what would you say are the benefits in hiring a third party uh, to manage a PR how important are existing relationships when we're working with a PR firm um, I think there's benefits to, to both things, yeah. really. I mean, they, they can bolster the relationships that you have already. Um, sometimes it's been interesting in the last couple of years, like some of the artists who we've been working with, oftentimes they'll moonlight in other jobs in the music industry as well. So it might not necessarily, well, it could be seen as a bit of a conflict for them to be spruiking their own music when they work for said radio station or spruking their music when they <laughs> already book venue. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah. there's a benefit in, in hiring a, a PR agent to sort of take that off of you um, and to do it yourself. Um, but in terms of benefits of hiring a third party to manage your PR, when you might already having, sorry, when you might already have relationships I feel like it all sort of bleeds into each other, you know, and like this isn't to say that if if you don't know anyone in the music industry, then your campaign's going to fail because, again, like I've been saying, you know, it's all about sort of building that up and, and, and sort of getting you in front of places. But if you do have relationships as well, like we're more than happy to work with you on that too. Like I've been working with um, a Melbourne soul act called Cooking on Three Burners on their last single and we've just deconstructed our whole campaign because they're like you know what we've got you booked for this this and this but we've already got really good ins with most of the soul funk and hip-hop um stations around the east coast so if you're okay we'll just handle that and i'm like sick okay. like if, <laughs> if you can do that yourself that's fine because i don't then want to come in and be like hey like Hey, said host, who may have never heard of me before, let me try and like service this when they can just be like, yo, I've got the song, can you play it? So I feel like there's, it all kind of, it can all bleed into each other and, and, and pay off for everyone. I hope that's answered the question. Yeah, I think, I think you've really like hit the nail on the head there. It's the relationships that are really important. <laughs> and if you've got them, yeah. then use them. Um, but if you don't have them, then find, you know, reach yeah. out to someone you. Who's, who's totally. Really dedicated their life to making those great connections. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, just on that, actually, I just wanted mm -hmm. to ask for, I guess, people that might want to, that are, that are watching this and um, maybe aren't artists, but maybe want to want to be a PR agent or maybe want to be a publicist or work in that media, what's the best way to kind of make your start in something like that? Probably, <laughs> if that is a good way to make you start doing something like that <laughs> i was just gonna say i'm probably the worst person to ask because i literally <laughs> just got an email being like hey, do you have a job right now do you want one because <laughs> <laughs> I, ne I, I never had a like i said i'd never had a background in, in pr before so i was just like uh i i mean i like working with musicians i yeah. i know how to write about them so yeah like sure but i feel like it's it's super easy like we've um some of the team members we've got now like they're all amazing in the sense that they bring so many different experiences of working in music or even in just the creative industries to the table and we all just help each other so you know sammy and also one of our other senior publicists jade like she came to beehive having worked for major labels in PR and communications for like 20 years. So I'm like, oh, wow, like I've got a new wealth of knowledge in this person who I can go to, you know, because I'm, I mean, I'm even still learning. Like I've been doing it for, yeah, five or six years now, but 
there are still different elements of it that I'm like, oh, I could really, I could up my game here. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And similarly with with Liz, again, she, she's helping me get over my fear of everything digital, which, you know, is, is really <laughs> therapeutic for me. Um, <laughs> and with our, our newest team members, Georgia and Dan, like they're, they're both so talented in their own ways as well that I'm like, okay, cool. Like I can ask Dan for his opinions on, on how to approach things because he's a musician as well and he's a venue booker so it's just like okay how would you kind of maneuver things in your community and it's you know we're all kind of in that stage of like elevating each other as well as elevating the business so there's no I feel like there's there's no really tough structure in terms of like okay if you've had no experience in PR you will never be able to get into it it's just about you know if it's something that interests you and if you there's some of again working with music or sharing musician stories is something you're really into then why not just reach out you know yeah that's good advice just so much out. of working in the music is you know built on practical knowledge anyway as opposed to theory so mm, true. <laughs> you're like yeah it all works into each other um, I'm going to finish with these two questions, if that's uh-huh. all right with you, so I know mm-hmm. it's uh, Sunday afternoon for everyone. But the first one is, um, would there be any reasons for a PR agency, what would be some of the reasons that a PR agency might not want to work with an artist? Like if you are an artist and you get knocked back from a PR agency, <laughs> <laughs> is um, it personal or is it? <laughs> no. It depends on who you are. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like you're really dealing with extremes when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, You know, if just, again, the culture that we're in right now, um, you know, if, if there are, there are some problematic artists who have been out there at the moment, um, looking for representation who we would be less likely to work with because their values don't necessarily align with ours um that's something that i you know i will always turn down a bag if it means that i don't have to kind of uh devalue our own work uh for that sort of for that sort of thing that's probably the most extreme reason that we turn down working with an artist other times like the most common reasons why we turn down working with an artist is purely for calendar space like especially when you think about campaigns in this month to month model you'd be surprised at how quickly a calendar year can get booked up which is another reason why I always say as soon as you're ready to go get in touch because and it's not just with us, it's with agencies across the board. Like you, you really need as much time as possible. That would probably be the only reason why we'd say no or failing that, you know, we, we might say, you know, this, this sort of music is the sort of music that, you know, we might not necessarily feel confident in being able to deliver the results for. But in doing that, um, here's a list of other reputable agencies who we think could be a better fit for you. So that's that's another thing that we always try and do as well. You know, if, if we feel like, you know, you're like a dance artist or a house artist who comes to us and I, you know, I'd hear it. I'd be like, look, I dig the track, but I, you know, I don't think I could deliver the results that you need or I wouldn't feel confident in that. Here's four excellent publicists that I would highly recommend you go look up so it's like if I turn it down it's it you know it would never be because it's like nah (laughs) you're not in for it it's more like you know I want to get you the best results sometimes I'd just be straight up and be like look I love the sound but I'm not sure if I'm the best person to do it Mm. go suss these guys out you know they're way more connected in that field for, for for what you're looking for specifically I'd recommend them but oftentimes it's it's just down to calendar space being like, oh, for, for when you're trying to release, we might just be booked out. Yeah. So I think that's, yeah, that's really important to remember as an artist is that there's lots of reasons why people say no. <laughs> and it's not always. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's always good to like just to stay in, t- you know, to get in touch in the first place, you know. 
Absolutely. And actually, that leads perfectly into the final question, uh, which is um, what's the best way to approach a PR firm like in general? And mm -hmm. what would like a first contact email look like? What kind of things do you include? How do you introduce yourself? Those sorts of the, the nitty gritty yeah. of that kind of element of strategy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that, you know, the, for the first email is often, you know, it's the impression setter. So if you can come to us being like, tell us what you've been working on, where you're from, what, again, what you're hoping to do with that release. Um, then also have a link to the music. You'd be surprised at how many artists come to us <laughs> being like, hey, we're this rad band from, you know, wherever. We've done this, this, and this, this, and this. We'd really love you to work on our new music and there's no link to it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Hard to make give, it give me, <laughs> give, me some, give me something to go on. Um, but yeah, just just keep it personable. Like, I, I, I don't want you to, to pitch to me as if you're trying to sell me a product. I want you to pitch to me um, as if you're, again, just introducing me to some music that I've never heard before that you think I dig. Be like this is where I want to go with it. Here's where I feel like a, you know a publicist could help. Um, whether that's you know I've had really good runs with, um, you know with if it's state specific media like if they're Perth artists sometimes I'll be like you know we've had really good success with Pile Rats mm. or with Express Magazine but we really just want to take it a bit further out. We were hoping you could help. Um, just t tell us that like that sort of thing like just tell us what we what you'd like from us and tell us why you know tell us about the music tell us what's you know driven you artistically all of that sort of stuff just as long as it's personable you've got the links in there you'll connect you will yeah. connect <laughs> what a beautiful note to end on <laughs> you will connect you will you will you'll connect True. Um, there are heaps more questions in this chat. And I'm so sorry, everyone, that we won't be able to get to them all today. Well, um, if you want, have... again, just email them to me. Yeah, please. I really yeah. implore you all to reach out. So she's great at email. Um, thank you, everyone, so much for coming today.